this out. Want to learn something cool, Yeah, let's see this. Oh, yeah, you got the coin straight. There oh. you go. Do that. Yeah. Probably the mission a little bit more effectively. <laughs> no, that's not true. You, we had the seats backwards this morning. Well, no, it was chief then the colonel. It's kind of funny, yeah. When I came out here, I'm like, ah, I get it. Yeah. It's weird jobs they give me. So if you could silence all your cell phones, and then due to the nature of the event and the wind, we're considering this an indoor event, so during the ceremony, no hat, no salute. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Master Sergeant Osberg, and it's my privilege to welcome you to Tyndall Air Force Base. Today, we'll celebrate the career and accomplishments of Senior Master Sergeant Christian A. McKay, accumulating over 20 years of distinguished service to the United States Air Force and the nation. At this time, we'd like to extend a special welcome to Christian's wife, Sahar, his son, Xavier, his daughter, Thea, and then a special surprise, his mom and his sister came all the way to see this special occasion. We'd also like to introduce our distinguished guests, the Command Chief of the 325th Fighter Wing, Catherine Grabham, the 325th Mission Support Group Chief, Chief Luis Reyes, there he is, the Commander 325th Civil Engineer Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel Brandy Smart, accompanied by Senior Master Sergeant David Ordway. We'd also like to welcome all other distinguished guests, commanders, chiefs, first sergeants, family and friends. I know Senior McKay and Sahara appreciate everyone's friendship and attendance on this special occasion, and thank you for joining us today. Today we become a part of history as we witness an awards presentation and a retirement ceremony to honor to honor Senior Master Sergeant McKay for his many outstanding contributions to the United States Air Force and our nation. He retires after more than 20 years of exceptional active duty service. Throughout a military career, a family must make many sacrifices and adjustments. Retirement from active duty is one more adjustment. It is a solemn yet exciting time in a person's career. It is solemn because it's time to remove the blue suit we all wear so proudly. It's exciting because it is also the beginning of a new and exciting challenges in a person's life. He will now enter our retired community, which makes large contributions to our country and Air Force. We honor and congratulate one who has given so much of his time and energy in the defense of our nation. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party, Lieutenant Colonel Retired William Frost and our honoree, Senior Mass Sergeant Christian McKay. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the singing of the national anthem by Airman Alicia Perez 
and the invocation by Captain Daniel Fairchild. Thank you. If you would, please join me in prayer. O oh, gracious Heavenly Father, we gather here today in celebration of Senior Master Sergeant Kristen McKay's excellent service to the United States Air Force and the country he has sworn to protect. You have guided and watched over him through important endeavors across the nation and abroad, and for that, O oh God, we thank you. We thank you for his unwavering leadership and all he has done to support this base and take vital steps to build the installation of the future. And God, we thank you for his family because we know that without their love and sacrifice, he might not have made quite the impact that he has. Now, O oh Lord, we ask that you continue to watch over Senior Master Sergeant McKay and his family as they step into new roles and new adventures. We know that great things are ahead, and we ask that you bless them in all that they do. Give them wisdom, love, and happiness as they take this next step. It's in your mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Emeron Perez and Captain Fairchild. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is now my honor to introduce to you Lieutenant Colonel Retired William Frost. All right, good morning. Good morning. Chief Bradham, Chief Reyes, Colonel Smart, uh, members of the 325th Civil Engineer Squadron, our EOD brothers and sisters, uh, especially the family of Senior Master Sergeant Christian A. McKay, wife Sahar, son Xavier, and daughter Thea. Uh, Welcome to this awesome occasion of uh, the retirement of your husband, father, colleague, mentor, EOD warrior, and airman. Mick and Sahir, I want to especially, I'm especially excited uh, for you both as you uh, end this current chapter of your lives and uh, start anew uh, with uh, great things to come. Um, we've got, uh, you've got a great career behind you and a new one well already established in front of you. So congratulations on that. And I also want to say that uh, while I'm dressed in a suit today, uh, this is not a funeral. This is a celebration. So let's make sure we celebrate, all right? Uh, thanks, Chaplain Fairchild. And uh, for the inspiring words and Airman Perez, wow. That was a, thank you for that. That was a great rendition of the national anthem. Uh, also, Jason, uh, for narrating today, 
uh, Ryan for helping organize the cats to put this together, and uh, the EOD flight for hosting this, the ceremony today. So thank you all very much. So now, if you would, uh, join me as we take a walk back through time and remember Christian's dedicated service, uh, di distinguished service uh, to the United States Air Force. So CMS Sergeant McKay hails from Innistimon, Innistimon, County Clare, Ireland, which if you did not know, is in the central west portion, I know because I googled it, central west portion, the uh, coast of Ireland. It's a thriving metropolis uh, with a population of about 1,100. Mick said 2,000, but I Googled it, so it has to be true. Uh, Google also said they had two grocery stores and 30 pubs, so I figured that's probably about right. <laughs> it's growing. 40 pubs. Uh, in the year 2000, uh, Christian enlisted in the Air Force uh, out of RAF Lake and Heath. Uh, in the United Kingdom. And after basic training, uh, his first assignment was not too far from here down the road at Na Naval Explosive Ordnance Disposal School. And as a student, uh, he was recognized by the Air Armament Center, the Naval School EOD, and the Air Force Detachment Three Commanders as, quote, outstanding performance and being an airman of astute, of absolute highest caliber. And in a testimony of Mick's early performance, uh, of the, in the foundation of which he established the rest of his career. After EOD school, Mick headed off to his first assignment at Langley Air Force Base, Virginia, and established himself there as a leader and an EOD journeyman. But uh, he wasn't there very long, and in 2003, young Christian found himself on one of his initial deployments to uh, Iraq, where he assisted in the seizure of 10 surface-to-air -air missiles, 1,200 mortars, and rocket propelled grenades, and it reduced the risk of coalition forces in the area and helped to establish the region uh, for the villagers in that area as well. Uh, and then uh, back at Langley, not only was Chris promoted to staff sergeant uh, during this time, but he played a key role in making the chief of staff of the Air Force's vision of an airborne and air assault Red Horse team a reality. And in fact, he parachuted into the Langley Air Power Air Show as a demonstration of the unit's uh, capability. But uh, in 2006, uh, he found himself back on the deployment trail, uh, this time in Paktika, Afghanistan, where his skills shine through once again as a team member, right? Uh, during this deployment, he cleared 2,600 miles of main supply route and participated in a 180-mile route reconnaissance mission for Operation Mountain Fury. He cleared an IED at the Providence Governor's Compound, and most importantly, he gained valuable experience that would soon be leveraging him as a team leader in the same uh, AO. And then, as was the ops tempo during this time, 2006, 2007, 2008 time frame, but this is 2006, we were fighting in two separate air theaters of operation. With a low density, high demand asset like EOD, we as an EOD family during that time really found ourselves either on deployment, preparing, for, recovering from deployment, or preparing for the next deployment. And it was really during these times of adversity that the bonds of EOD across all of our services were formed. And for Mick, it was time to head back out the door, and this time to forward operating base loyalty in Baghdad, and as a team leader, it, as a team leader, and is credited with destroying 2,000 UXOs, eight IEDs, and 35 improvised devices across 48 patrols. He was awarded the Bronze Star for exceptional leadership in combat. And this is also where I briefly met Mick for the first time, as I intruded on his compound visiting then Staff Sergeant Grisham when I was the ops officer for the weapons intelligence team, or WIT. And for you young guys, if you haven't heard of WIT, just ask uh, Grish. But I'll tell you, the example, or the, uh, the lessons learned from there is, uh, and if you young guys out there, if there's ever anything you don't like in the military and you raise it up to the highest levels you can, 
from your position, somehow the leadership is going to put you in charge of it and make you love it. So understand that. But I, diver I, um, I digress, so we're going to get back on track. So after two trips to Iraq uh, and one to Afghanistan and a good run at Langley, it was time to pack up and head to Incirlik Air Base in Turkey, where Mick was the NCOIC of operations. Now, while there are no bad assignments in the Air Force, right? Uh, uh, we, we love everywhere we've been and everywhere we're going, but uh, Mick really loved Incirlik Turkey uh, because of the leadership and the uh, people that were on in his unit at, there that really helped him develop the skills uh, to really lead a flight. And, but I think that the biggest reason he loved Incirlik like Turkey was because that's where he got step promoted to tech sergeant. <laughs> but it doesn't come without uh, great leadership and great effort. Uh, so. Congratulations there. And I'll also say that as a tech sergeant, uh, there's not an EOD operator out there I haven't talked to that tech sergeant isn't their favorite rank. Uh, that's where you get the lead teams and uh, where the rubber meets the road in EOD especially. So uh, I know he uh, was excited about that. In the summer of 2010, it was time to pack his bags again and head to familiar territory, RFA, Lake and, RAF Lake and Heath, uh, where his whole journey started 10 years earlier. Pretty, uh, pretty funny how that comes full circle. It, it's coming full circle for me right now because uh, I was actually born here on Tyndall Air Force Base. <laughs> so, well, I've been coming full circle for a while in this Air Force career, right here. Um, but uh, fortunately for you, Mick, uh, you barely got a soccer match in before you had to head out the door again in 2011. And uh, to what would be your most challenging deployment uh, during your career? And that was uh, to location, um, operating location Bravo in Zangabad, Tanjway, Afghanistan. Uh, here he led 31 combat missions directly supporting 125 Striker Brigade Combat Team. That included a, conducting a post-blast analysis after a U.S. soldier was wounded in action from a 150-pound homemade explosive device that struck his vehicle. During Operation Hope Hero, Mick also located and cleared four pressure plate IEDs. Christian also took the lead in the clearance of a compound that was used to successfully ambush and wound four Afghan National Security Forces. And I guess we're working on your flyover now. Christian also took the lead of the clearance of a compound that was successfully used to ambush some Afghan security forces members. While clearing a safe route into the compound, he identified two pressure plate IEDs and one pressure plate staged for de deployment. Basically, it was ready to go off, but you're not a UD. Uh, his actions on this day saved the lives and earned him an immediate com Army Commendation Medal. Commendation medal. Uh, and also during this deployment, though, Mick led his team to recover critical evidence that resulted in five biometric matches for insurgent protection, which I'm sure he learned from Grish when he was at Loyalty. And uh, his leadership, bravery, and actions uh, in the Horn of Panjwe also garnered him a Bronze Star for that final deployment. His second one, by the way. Then Mick again returned to Lakenheath, but was once again handpicked for another short notice deployment. Handpicked in 2013. This time it was directly supporting Special Forces teams throughout Afghanistan. During pre deployment training, or COBRA, here at Tyndall Air Force Base, I got to know Mick and his uh, appreciation uh, or, and appreciate his expertise, leadership, and passion as an EOD technician and for his shenanigans, which I'll hold off now. So 
to repeat. I'm sure the next sortie will be heading out here shortly, but that's all right. I got to know Mick pretty well and appreciate his leadership, expertise, and uh, shenanigans uh, as an EOD operator. Not that I ever took part, <laughs> ever. But there was something about a bridge, don't go past it. I don't know, do you remember that? Don't go past the bridge? I don't either. I don't either, it was foggy. Um, but anyway, we got through our training. Everyone, almost everyone made it through without injury. Uh, only one casualty, but that's okay. Uh, it wasn't, it was actually not good, but uh, we got through it and headed off to uh, Afghanistan again. And Mick was at Kogiani, uh, Afghanistan, supporting Operational Detachment Alpha 3316. And during this period, Sergeant McKay expertly led his team during two separate enemy engagements by rocket propelled grenades on his outpost. And these are about the size of this area right here, pretty much. Through expedient post blast analysis of the guard tower, he quickly calculated the back azimuth to the point of origin in order to accurately engage the enemy. Furthermore, he expertly led five quick response force operations with the Afghan National Army Special Operations Afghan local police and directly supported the apprehension of a high value target as well as two persons of interest further securing the Kogiani district. Now while there's nothing standard about any of our deploy deployments, the deployments to Iraq and Afghanistan provided unique challenges requiring an extreme level of vigilance and professionalism every day on every mission all the time. Through these experiences, bonds formed that bind our EOD brothers and sisters for a lifetime. So thank you, Mick, for the leadership that you provided during your deployments as a team member, as a team leader, as an airman, as a warrior. So thank you for that. And now you find yourself retiring as a senior master sergeant and as a superintendent of the EOD flight here at Tyndall Air Force Base. This is where you've led your team through different, difficult and different advers uh, adversities, like ensuring your EOD airmen are trained in today's 21st century Air Force, but while also making sure they're ready for that next conflict, like 20 years ago, when we were not really ready for that conflict, and not letting that uh, slip by, by us this time. So Senior Master Sergeant McKay, during your career, you've been stationed at Eglin, Langley, Enserlick, Lake and Heath, and now Tyndall. Furthermore, you've deployed multiple times to Iraq and Afghanistan, as well as Al Dafra. These locations, the people you've served, the experiences along the way, are all markers and memories of a great career in the United States Air Force and to your nation. And this should be something that you and your family are very proud of. And I know I speak for your EOD family and our Air Force when I say we are proud of you and your family's service. So thank you for what you have done and sacrificed to our nation and her allies. And I'll say one uh, last personal note. Uh, the, my uncle served in World War II and when he was on a B-17 flying over Germany and he was uh, um, anti-aircraft fire. And he took a picture outside of his B-17 of all the flak that was, flat, that was hitting up in the, uh, the flak balls that were hit, blowing up in the squadron. And I got that picture after he passed away. And I kept it over my desk. And I said, you know, pretty much every day things aren't that bad. Now I got a few pictures of my own. But um, Mick, I'm sure when your children are old enough, you might have something to share with them that if they're having a bad day, things aren't that bad. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, Mick and the family are excited about the next chapter that includes for Mick anyway, moving uh, for the whole family, moving to California this summer. And right now he's working with the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory on their explosive training management team. Uh, so congrats on that new position. So he's, he's double dipping. Let's just go out there. Uh, so Mick, you've come a long way. Uh, I'm excited for what you got in the next chapter. Uh, you've led a storied career in the Air Force. Uh, thanks for your leadership, your service, your sacrifice, uh, and your families as well. 
Um, and, and if you're ready, I'm ready to make this retirement official. That time? Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation of the Meritorious Service Medal. Attention to orders. This is to certify that the President of the United States of America, authorized by Executive Order 16 January 1969, has awarded the Meritorious Service Medal, 3rd Oak Leaf Cluster, to Senior Master Sergeant Christian A. McKay for Meritorious Service from 1 November 2018 to 14 April 2021. Senior Master Sergeant Christian A. McKay distinguished himself in the performance of outstanding service to the United States as Squad Squadron Superintendent, 325th Civil Engineer Squadron, 325th Mission Support Group, 325th Fighter Wing, Tyndall Air Force Base, Florida. During this period, Sergeant McKay led a 25-member explosive ordnance disposal flight in executing 37 emergency responses, resulting in the safe disposal of 26,800 hazardous munitions. He also directed support of 37 Secret Service missions for the protection of the President and Vice President of the United States. Furthermore, Sergeant McKay successfully led a 60-day evacuation accounting for 28 team members and their families while ensuring their safe return to base after a Category 5 hurricane. During the evacuation, he volunteered to return early to coordinate the evaluation of 80,000 hurricane damaged munitions and the disposal of 25,000 munitions which restored operations for the munitions storage area. Finally, Sergeant McKay's innovative thinking was instrumental in leading the coronavirus-19 response by isolating at-risk personnel, developing virtual work procedures for 291 personnel, and ensuring mission accomplishment throughout the pandemic, culminating in his selection as the squadron's 2019 Senior Non-Commissioned Officer of the Year. The singularly distinctive accomplishments of Sergeant McKay accumulate a distinguished career in the service of his country and reflect great credit upon himself and the United States Air Force. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Senior Master Sergeant McKay, it is our honor to afford you the opportunity to demo qual one last time as an active duty explosive ordnance disposal technician. And remember, 20 years bad luck if this doesn't work. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the publishing of the orders. Publish the order. Attention to orders. Department of the Air Force, Washington, D.C., Special Order Number ACD 522, dated 30 December 2020, effective 24 April 2021, Senior Master Sergeant Christian A. McKay is hereby relieved from active duty, organization, and station of assignment. Retirement effective 25 April 2021, by order of the Secretary of the Air Force. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated as we continue with the presentation of the retirement certificate, certificates of appreciation, and the United States Air Force retirement pin. Lieutenant Colonel William Frost will now present the retirement certificate. The retirement certificate reads as follows. Certificate of Retirement from the Armed Forces of the United States of America, 
to all who shall see these presents greeting. This is to certify that Senior Master Sergeant Christian McKay, having served faithfully and honorably, was retired from the United States Air Force on the 24th day of April, 2021. Signed by Colonel Gregory M. Mosley, Commander 325th Fighter Wing, and General Charles Q. Brown, Chief of Staff, United States Air Force. <laughs> Colonel Frost will now present the Certificate of Appreciation from Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. Certificate reads as follows. I'm proud to join your friends and family in congratulating you on your retirement from the United States Air Force. The achievements and contributions have been made throughout your career are indicative of the core values of our great, servi of our great service. Your retirement is well deserved, but your selfless contributions will be sorely missed. On behalf of all airmen, thank you for your faithful and devoted service to our nation. As this chapter in your life closes and a new one begins, I hope the years ahead are filled with more great memories and continued success. Signed, Joanne S. Bass, Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. Lieutenant Colonel Frost will now present the Presidential Certificate of Appreciation. It reads, Certificate of Appreciation for Service in the Armed Forces of the United States. Senior Master Sergeant Christian A. McKay, I extend to you my personal thanks and the sincere appreciation of our grateful nation for your contribution of honorable service to our country. You have helped maintain the security of the nation during a critical time in its history with a devotion to duty and a spirit of sacrifice in keeping with the proud traditions of military service. I trust that in the coming years you will maintain an active interest in the armed forces and the purpose for which you served. Those who follow in your footsteps will draw inspiration from your commitment, dedication, and sacrifices made to ensure the protection of our American freedoms. My best wishes to you for happiness and success in the future. Signed, Donald J. Trump, Commander-in-Chief. <laughs> Ms. McKay, will you please now join us on stage for the pinning of the retirement pin on Senior Mass Sergeant Christian McKay. Every retiree receives a special retirement pin as a memento of their active duty service. At this time, I'd like to ask Sahar to place this pin on her husband's lapel to symbolize his transition from active duty to retired status. Please stay on stage. We cannot let you go without recognizing your contributions to your husband's career. Lieutenant Colonel Frost will now present Sahar with the Air Force Certificate of Appreciation. The certificate reads as follows. Certificate of Appreciation on behalf of all Air Force Airmen and their families. The Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force presents this Certificate of Appreciation to Sahar McKay. I join your spouse, family, and friends in thanking you for the numerous contributions and sacrifices you made in support of our United States Air Force. Your dedication gave strength and purpose to your spouse's service in defense of our nation. Signed, Joanne S. Bass, Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. No, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. You can sit down. Senior Master Sergeant McKay will now present some gifts to his wife and children. David can come up here too. So I know you probably haven't seen 
what you're about to, to get, but uh, sometimes flowers and a gift is appropriate, um, and I know very much so that it is. Uh, I wanted to get a flower that lasted, so I mean, I think you could already probably see for, Forever Rose London is uh, something that should last forever, and you know, that's basically a symbolism of, of us, so um, I love you, thank you for, for everything. Thank you for giving us a purpose and, and such an exciting life in front of us. So. Yes, I know. So I got a couple other. Th I got a couple other things. Again, uh, we've taken a handful of photos together in uniform, and I think we've always realized that we never really got that picture perfect moment. So, so what I did, uh, I took one of our wedding photos and kind of doctored it a little bit to, sh to show that when she said yes and we got married, she knew what she was getting herself into. <laughs> so, so there you go. That's what I learned in Lincoln down there. Thank you. So this is next two are for my, my children. And I really wanted to kind of give them a token, something to keep with them for their lives on, you know, born, born a military child and just how much, how much they're loved and then also how much hopefully they'll grow up with all our traits and, you know, the passion for what we hope for, for them in their future. And this is for you. This is for Xavier. Who's that? You want to hold, you want to hold this for a second? <laughs> and this one's for baby Thea. Yeah. 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 Those portraits also have the little military child medal at the bottom of them as well. So, thank you. You ready? You're good, bud. Audible, just say hello. hello. Say hello. Say hi. No? You don't? Just say hi. You want to work? No? Okay. Say hello. Okay, maybe not. Stay right. That's good, yeah. So on behalf of the squadron, Lieutenant Colonel Smart and Senior Ordway have a couple gifts for you. Oops, I forgot the flight first. Yeah. So we have a gift from the flight. We'll do that real quick, Air Mabishi, since you're the youngest one here. Don't drop it. <laughs> Just a token of our appreciation, Mick, for the leadership. And uh, as, as Frost said, shenanigans as well. So. Oh, no. You can thank Stanley for that. Light, light box. Yeah. Stanley uh, did all that. I got it. You're going first? So. Yeah, I'm going to go. All right. All right, Mick. So uh, I don't know if you guys can hear me, I'll be louder, but uh, yeah. to bring him back to his roots, we got uh, a prime bottle of uh, Irish Scotch whiskey. Oh, Scotch. 
The Tyndall Force Base EOD flight members will now perform a flag folding ceremony. The flag folding ceremony descends from our nation's history and represents the same religious principles upon which our country was founded. The portion of the flag donating honor is a canton of blue containing stars representing the states our veterans have served in uniform. The canton field of blue dresses from left to right and is inverted only when draped as a pall on a casket of a veteran who has served our country honorably in uniform. In the armed forces of the United States at the ceremony of retreat, the flag is lowered folded in a triangle, and kept under watch throughout the night as a tribute to our nation's honored debt. The next morning, it is brought out at the ceremony of Reveille, run aloft as a symbol of our belief in the resurrection of the body. The first fold of our flag is a symbol of life. 
The second fold is a symbol of our belief in the eternal life. This third fold is made in honor and remembrance of a veteran departing our ranks who gave a portion of life for the defense of our country to attain peace throughout the world. The fourth fold represents our weaker nature, for as American citizens trusting in God, it is to him we turn in times of peace as well as in times of war for his divine guidance. The fifth fold is a tribute to our country, for in the words of Stephen Decatur, our country in dealing with other countries, may she always be right, but she is still our country, right or wrong. The sixth fold is where our hearts lie. It is with our hearts that we pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. The seventh fold is a tribute to our armed forces, for it is through our armed forces that we protect our country and our flag against all her enemies, whether they are found within or without the boundaries of our republic. The eighth fold is a tribute to the one who entered into the valley of the shadow of death, that we might see the light of day. The ninth fold is a tribute to womanhood, for it has been through their faith, love, loyalty, and devotion that the character of men and women who have made this country great have been molded. The tenth fold is a tribute to father, for he too has given his sons and daughters for the defense of our country since she was first born. The eleventh fold is a reminder of all prisoners of war and those missing in action and eternal hope for their well-being. The twelve fold represents the Constitution of the United States of America and glorifies the freedom of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We fold from the stripes to the stars, for as where the stripes represent the 13 original colonies that founded our republic, they are now embodied in the 50 sovereign states represented by the stars which cover the stripes. When the, fa when the flag is completely folded and the stars are uppermost, reminding us of our national motto, in God we trust. After the flag is folded, it takes on the appearance of a cocked hat, ever reminding us of the soldiers who served under George Washington the and the sailors who served under Captain John Paul Jones, who were followed by their comrades and shipmates in the armed forces of the United States, preserving for us the right and privileges of freedoms we enjoy today. Presenting our country's flag to honored members upon the retirement has been a long-standing tradition. Today we present Senior Master Sergeant Christian McKay with the flag of the United States of America. The flag we present was flown over the Explosive Ordnance Disposal Memorial on March 24, 2021 at the request of Chief Master Sergeant Jeremy Phillips to commemorate the faithful service of Senior Master Sergeant McKay from a grateful nation. Senior Master Sergeant McKay, the men and women of the 325th EOD flight present this flag of the United States of America to you in a grateful appreciation for your outstanding service to the 325th Fighter Wing the EOD community, and the entire Air Force. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Senior Master Sergeant Christian A. McKay, U.S. Air Force, retired. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you for all of you for coming out, traveling, and tuning in to share with this mi in this milestone with me and my family. We are truly honored to have you here with us. Due to COVID and quarantine regu <laughs> requirements, a lot of our family were unable to attend virtually until I got a bombshell dropped on me, courtesy of Chief Grabham, Mass Sergeant Rich. Peterson uh, and, and my wife that my mother and my sister 
traveled all the way from Ireland and met me as I came in the door this morning to get, to get ready for this event. So, thank you. It, it means the world to me. Thank you, Ryan, for taking this on, for organizing this event from the ground up. Thank you, Jason. Thank you to the EOD shop for helping making this all happen. Thank you, Aaron Perez, for the rendition of the national anthem, the chaplain for the invocation, and Colonel Frost. Bill, thank you for coming here and presiding over my retirement. As you know, it means, it means a lot to me and, and it, to really help me reflect and celebrate the experiences that have molded me into the person I am today. And I, re I really appreciate that. I'm not sure how, how long thank yous normally are, but I, I do know that if I was to thank everyone that had an impact, impact on my career, we would probably be here until Airman Vici retired. So with that being said, I do need to thank a couple additional select few. So I wouldn't have been able to start this journey without my dad, my grandmother, or, or my mom. So thank you, Dad, for teaching me as a boy the meaning of patience what it was to be a good man. So you were always my first hero. Thank you, Grandma, for teaching me to follow my dreams. And Mom, you weren't supposed to be here. I am absolutely over the moon that you are here. Uh, thank you for everything. You're welcome. <laughs> I know we broke the rules, but it's also a very, very good call. Uh, maybe we should keep that to ourselves a little bit, but uh, for, for teaching me love, compassion, respect, and for proving to me where there's a will, there's a way. Obviously, you, you guys decided to knock that out this morning. <laughs> Most of all, Mom, thank you for letting me join, or for leave home and join EOD, even though you knew the mountain of rosaries and prayers of petitions it would cost. You might be curious how I got myself into this mess. The only thing I can think of is I was fond of adventure at the time, and I probably joined for the adventure and, and a job that allowed me to travel. It just so happens that through this adventure, I found a calling, a community of, that became friends, and those friends became family. I originally signed up for six years, and after some time I realized I was part of something bigger than myself, and I was surrounded by good people finding their own way to just like I was. Six years became 12, 12 years became 18, and 18 years became, here we are today, retirement. Everyone probably has a different story to tell or a different idea on what makes EOD special. But since this is my retirement, I think I have creative rights, and this is, is, this is my take. Short and sweet, EOD is special because of the people, because of the wolf pack mentality, and because we know the value of laughter. To me, people's lives are defined by the exper their experience and and for my career, I truly believe deployment experiences have, have defined mine. On most of my deployments and many others, while boarding the plane to depart, we would pray for everyone to return together on the same plane, plane knowing the likelihood was high that, uh, that that probably would not happen. As a career field, a community, and a family, we all have experienced unimaginable loss. I spent, I spent a long time fixating on our loss before I realized that during our darkest moments, we shone the brightest. We grieved together as a family. We honored our brothers and sisters who, go, who gave all as a foundation of what it means to wear the badge and why we continue to stand up and go again. Through blood, sweat, and tears, I've learned that the value of life and I will always cherish, cherish each day. So from the defining moments of my life and career, I would like to share just a few parting thoughts for your own experiences. Make the most out of each day, as God's plan is different for all of us, no matter what walk you walk. Each day counts. Hug your friends and family like it'll always be the last time. The world is what you make of it, so don't let opportunity pass you by or hard work stop you from achieving your goals. Don't limit yourself. You can achieve anything you put your mind to. And if you find yourself struggling, please, Ask a wingman for help. And now you might all think I was up online Googling a bunch of different values to, to throw into a speech, but this was maybe a couple of tastes of whiskey 
on a couple of nights that they're, they're all passionate things that I feel about, that I've, that I've learned throughout years and years of different, different experiences and, and people and trying to help people you know, make best for themselves. Find, find passion in your life. It could be for you. Air has been me. I have opportunity to grow in a way that I never, I've grown sea family as well as even bigger Air Force family, and that I'm for every to the out there. Remember your own or on the team, so, so build it strong. For the airmen that will continue the mission, remember teamwork, taking care of each other. No reason to work on them. Know your and share them. Lean for plan to the future and not build positive and meaningful relationships. It'll be more valuable than you'll ever know. And lastly, perspective is different for everyone. Don't let yourself become a prisoner of your own perspective. Always find the good in a day, in a day no matter how dark it may be. And if you struggle, Struggle to see the good in life. Reach out to your friends and your family so they can start showing you the good in yourself. I just wanted to thank everybody again for, for coming out. This uh, career, this endeavor that that I started off on turned into so much more than I, that I mentioned that I, that I could ever imagine and I'm grateful for it. I'll always keep it here within my heart. I will always, I was, we all, all already know that we are always a part of it. And if anybody ever needs anything, I'm a phone call away. Um, if y'all ever in California, we'll be heading there shortly, uh, probably in a couple months. Uh, stop in, look us up. Um, I would definitely love to, to catch up and, and, and see everybody again and continue to help where I, where I can. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in appreciation for his contribution to the Air Force and its mission, the men and women of the United States Air Force are proud to have served with Senior Master Sergeant McKay and assure him he will always be a valuable member of the team and the UD family, even in retirement. We wish him, Sahar, and their children every success in their future endeavors. This concludes the formal retirement ceremony for Senior Master Sergeant Christian A. McKay. Please rise and remain standing for the departure of the official party and family. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending today's ceremony, and now please join us for the reception and personally congratulate Senior M Christian McKay and his family. Also this afternoon, uh, Mick has invited everyone to, uh, at 4 p.m., behind schooners, not in schooners. He's going to have stuff out there for all of us to uh, congratulate.